Karibu Babu. Welcome, <clears throat> welcome, grandfather. Karibu Babu. Habari Yamjana Mama. Habari Yamjana, how is the afternoon? Mama. Mama. There's one. How is the afternoon? Habari za mchana. I think. Mm, either make, yeah, it makes up its own syllable. It's not prenasalization of the consonant because it's not home organic. It takes up a beat. No, no see you. Mm, sound messed up. But it's mchana and then. Grand, oh, just Grandpa Babu, not grandparents. So my body is like a how, Zamchana. Oh, maybe it's a pointing word. Two different pointing dictics, Za and Ya, would be a guess. Habari Zamchana Dada. Habari Zamchana Dada. How is the. <coughs> The afternoon, Dada, sister, big sister. Dada. Just sister. I was home, Habari, mm. Nyumbani, home. Habari, ya, Nyumbani, ya. Dada. 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 Good morning, father. Uh, subuhi, Habari, za, asubuhi. Da, uh, baba. Baba. Habari za asubuhi baba. So, habari za nao nyumbani. Habari za nyum, probably a ni prefix uh, class marker. Nyumbani. I was home. <clears throat> Grandmother. Bibi? Yeah. Or Nya Nya. Congratulating myself there. So, welcome back to Lango Institute. I'm your verb ally. I'm a language teacher at Lango. Lango. The, the sorry the Twitter page for Lango you can see our languages that we teach that we offer we do remote as well as moving back into on-site English Korean Spanish Chinese French German Japanese Portuguese Italian and we have occasional workshops on topics like phonetics and other things of language learning interest we've got a blog and a podcast that you can find on our page languageinstitute.com uh, under the Things tab, blog podcasts, our books are up there for sale. They are wonderful uh, language learning and language play, uh, like word game books for Korean learners. I'll show you what they look like. And wonderfully illustrated by a talented local artist. So do check those out. Okay, today... For this evening, the theme is Latin and Romance Languages. Let's do the mother language first. So Latin is what we call the language spoken roughly 3,000 to 1,000 ish years ago. So, I mean, the city of Rome was supposed to be founded in 753 BC. And late, Latin means the, reg the language of that region, Latium. So from the founding, you know, before 500 BC, through the breakup of the Roman Empire, and never Latin never stopped being spoken. It just became, it developed in different ways in different places. We call the daughter languages Romance. That's what my R-O-M stands for here. So French and Spanish is the biggest one in terms of number of speakers. And French is very widespread. So Italian, the standard languages of the southern part of Europe. Uh, but lots of regional varieties too, some linguistically quite distinct. We just started Catalan here. But anyway, Romance is the daughter languages, Romance language family. LG for language family. So 
what we're going to be talking about here. So I just want to cover as much ground as quickly as I can here in our Latin course. Corinna et liwea iter facie unt. Of course, he's not a native speaker of Latin because there are none. We do still use and occasionally produce new things in Latin. And the, so the written tradition goes back more than 2,000 years of the Latin language. And like I said, it's the basis of about half the languages of Europe. They're just daughter language. English is not. We did not come directly from Latin. It's a cousin branch to our family of languages. Iter faciunt. Corinna et Livia, these are names, female names, and Livia, conjoined. They're the subject. All right, we're going to see nouns, we're going to see verbs. And in this language, and in all of the daughter ones, and the cousins, the grammatical roles and categories are marked on suffixes. And at the front, you have your verb roots. That's for a verb. Faciunt, this is so facile. A lot of English words. That's going to be something I'm going to try to mention here and there. Words that we know as just English users. People, I'm going to assume you know just English and no other language, but you're here to learn. <laughs> or whatever floats your boat. <laughs> but I'm trying to teach here. So, fac, F A C is faciunt, the root of this verb form. And English has derivatives like facile, faction. Faciunt. Here we have it as a main word. It means to do or to make. Say, so make a journey. Iter is a noun for the road. Make a journey. There's no a. And that's it. So the verb is, okay, so the grammatical things are marked at the ends. This nt Bacchiant. shows us that the subject of the verb is a group of people, third person, so neither the speaker nor the person spoken to. Everybody else in the world is in the third person category. So, plural. With Corina. Two, two singular persons named. They're conjoined, so it's more than one, and the verb's going to be in the plural. This iter now, so they are the subject, they're in the nominative case, Latin in five cases, which is formed, so for our purposes now, just forms in which distinct meaning form pairings in which nouns would occur. No noun occurred outside of one of these five cases. Nominative, used, most, used primarily for the subject and other things. Accusative, used for direct objects, is its primary function. And sometimes other adverbials here and there, of duration and such. Dative, case of the indirect object person to whom it tends to be an animate and not an inanimate thing in the dative case just because it takes generally it requires a sentient being a being with a mind to receive but not exclusively it's just a tendency so person to whom is the core thing to associate with dative these are, I'm giving you the primary functions of them, but each has subsidiary ones too. It's not succinctly described very easily. Okay, and then we have an ablative case. I'm going to say the genitive for last. It's case of the source from which. And related meanings. And genitive isn't, is kind of on a different level of case. Because these first four uh, assign noun phrase sort of with regard to their function in the verbal action. But a genitive is not generally like that. It, this is the one modifying a noun is its primary function. So it's kind of on a different footing, in my view. All right. This is Longum iter facio. Here and if I go too fast, or you'd like something explained more clearly, that's what I'm here to do. It's what I'm happy to do. This is what we're going to see in Latin: is that it uses these distinct forms of nouns. Iter is a, in a class of nouns where the nominative and the accusative look alike. It's called neuter. So these are the cases, and another important grammatical category 
is gender of nouns and adjectives. Latin had three, M for masculine. And these are just arbitrary drawers into which nouns are sorted in speakers' brains. It has three, MFN is the succinct way to refer to them. Neuter makes sense at the end of the list because it means neither. Feminine. So one of the main uses if it's, if it's a noun referring to a human most of the time, the masculine ending will be clear. Same for female names with, of female people. But there are human nouns that have, just happen to be neuter gender. Right? Neuter is Latin. It means neither. Ne uter, not either of two. It's a compound word originally. Kind of fused together into a single stem now. Longum iter. So this longum is clearly accusative singular. Well, uh, unless it's neuter also. But in this case it is neuter. It's the object of the making. The thing I make is a long road. I make a long journey. Fuck you. I get the meaning I from the O at the end. Which is which continues in all of the daughter languages in their own ways. I make a long journey. Marcus et Stephanus iter faciunt. Marcus et Stephanus iter, the object, faciunt. This one is neuter. And one in this family of languages, one note about neuter is nominative form and accusative form identical. In all the branches that I know of, that's that continues to be true in German to this day. Whatever languages still have case, I would suppose Icelandic. Iter longum facis. Facis. Look to the verb. This I S. So anything that ends in an S like that is second person. Well, I mean, if we're in the present tense, you are making a long road. Here in the other order, that there was complete freedom in that regard in Latin. Whether you put the noun first or the adjective, you make a long journey. Who iter facit corina? Interesting word over here. So the question word quo means to what place, to where. We put that first in English as well. We call that fronting, moves to the front of the sentence. Iter facit, that's the verbal core verbal core with its object verb and object kernel of this thing they make she makes single singular person with a t so fuck it. Fuck it. make to where we say does corinna make put that last the journey or a journey all the same latin had no articles that developed in romance but not was, was not part of classical latin Articles or words meaning things like the and a. Uh. Marcus iter longum ar urbem facit. Some more information on the long journey. Ad, preposition toward. Urbem, accusative, city. Toward the city. Facit. An accusative can be the object of a preposition. Of. Preposition is a word like to, from, for, and so on. Oh, and I meant to say that about accusative. It's true of ab ablative nouns as a uh, case as well. Marcus. Marcus. And the, this is the most common masculine type, ending in U.S. in the in the subject case. Nominative singular. And we preserve it as a name with the ending in English. Marcus. Hi, Marcus. Oh, hi, Marcus. Iter longum ad urbem makes a long journey. That's a noun phrase in English, a long journey, and it is in Latin too. Here it's together. Iter longum, the way, the road, which is Iter. to the city, ad urbem. urbem. This is accusative as well. So we got more than one accusative noun phrase here. No need to panic. Let me just copy that and we can annotate the structure of it a bit. Not that. Marcus. 
Victor Longol. Nope, I'll just type it down. Marcus. And I'll try to segment the endings off to make them easier to perceive. Peter, that has what we call a zero ending. That's the end of the stem. And the lack of any further sound is structurally significant. Either nominative or accusative singular. Longum. Convenient to separate there. And this is a noun phrase together. A road that is long. Noun first. Longum. Now comes a new kind of phrase headed by a preposition. Toward. And then this noun phrase inside is in the accusative. M is the ending here. This is what we call a consonant stem. B is the last common sound in each of the case forms. After that falls as ending. In this um, us and um class, it's a little harder to say. Like it's really the boundary is there, but because this vowel varies, it's for learning purposes more useful to segment it there. But the M is what's common to this. The nouns in this case, most of them in the accusative will end in an M. Ad urbem. Prepositional phrase there, fuck it, the does, singular. So stem there, it is the ending. Although, maybe better to put it here. One, one way to skin that particular feature. Now, this is a verb. It heads a verb phrase, which I use the V-shaped uh, brackets for. And the object is included in that, to make that a little clearer. All right. So subject here, Marcus, that's the object of the verb. Well, this is the object of a preposition. Here we have prep, PP for prepositional phrase, and here's the verb, and it's third singular. Makes a long journey, city. That was amateurish. I make a journey to the city with the pronoun be ego. Iter facio ad urbem, or some other order. Iter ad urbem facio, with verb last, is quite elegant. The road to the city, I make it. You make a journey, iter facis, be the kernel of that. And now from the city is a differ different preposition. Ab urbe interfacis. So now the prepositions, so I'm going to use these curly ones, ab, and now the form, not urbem, but urbe, ending in a vowel. And this is the ablative case, which means source, place from which. This one. So here, from a place, from the city, naturally goes with an ablative noun. Ab means from. And let's think of English derivatives before we go on to the next one. What words do we have just in everyday English that every speaker knows and uses that are derived from these 2,000-year-old, roughly, words and meanings? Ab, from. And then city, the noun stem. The case ending is apple. Consonant stem here, ending in B. So, iter, we have itinerary for this. Long, our word long happens, the, Eng the native English word with that meaning, stretched in one dimension, uh, happens to be spelled just like that, and they're cousin words. But we have longevity, longitude, with the Latin origin. Ad, we have anything and beginning with A-D, roughly, where it's a prefix, like admit, uh, and then the D often assimilates, so in assign, D became, uh, matched the S that followed, it was ad sign, and so on. A-F-F, A-G-G, -G, aggressive, lots of different English words, it'd be hundreds if not thousands have this ad element in them. Urbanization, you know, all that family with, like, what else is there? Urbane. The positive meaning. Okay, and facile, factory, factor, of course. Dozens, at least, of derivatives of this root. 
and the ab, the full form of that is abs. It could be either a on its own, with a consonant followed, or ab, but occasionally you see the s preserved, abs. So in absolute, it's closer to its full shape. The, here I'm using round brackets for things that are optional. The A initial is always there. The fullest form of this, I mean to say, is abs. Abstain would be one word. The S is part of the prefix, I do think. Yeah, the root is tenere, to hold. So the S is part of that positional word, abs. Here we have ab, ending in a B. So that's this stretch with the optional B here shown. You make a journey, the iter, the object, you make it, fakis, iter, and to the city ad urbem, accusative of the destination. So that's a good use of accusative. Destination and extent come there. Where do you travel to? So, quo vadis gets you close. Where are you going? Quo, do you make a journey? Iterfakis. Quo means to where, not where if it's stationary, but with that uh, locomotion involved. Marcus iter longum ar urbem facit. Marcus, subject, iter longum, object of the verb, ad urbem facit. He makes a long journey to the city. And let's just collect those verb endings that we've seen so far. With facere is the infinitive form of the verb. Use the dot for where the stem ends and the ending begins. All right. So first person means the speaker s singular. Facio. Or maybe it's two syllables, facu. Second singular, you do F A C, and the ending is I S. And this is just one possible analysis, one way to break it down. It's always, there's generally more than one way to look at a thing like this. And now the plural forms, meaning we, in this case, one plural meaning means we make it, we do it. This one means make or do. And also many words with F I C when it's with a reduced vowel. So probably the, I mean, not the word fiction itself, but lots of other things. Fication in that one, it's a reduced vowel of this root. And then also things ending in phi, saponify to become soap. Diversify, any of those are traced back to this verbal root with this meaning in Latin. Right, the first plural form, facimus. Second plural, meaning you all. You, more than one person, facitis. We didn't see these last two, but we didn't see the third plural, faciunt. So if we were field workers, I, would, I might bracket these as special. Just reconstructed them. I didn't actually see them in the wild. That was a portion of Latin. Let's do a daughter language. What shall we do? What's whatever we haven't done in the longest time? Let's say Catalan. It, just at the bottom because it's taught through Spanish. Do you want to get to that soon? Let's do French next, and then Catalan. So now we're gonna look at some daughter languages and look for the same, some of the same words and the same endings and grammatical parallels, things that's, stuff that's inherited, maybe stuff that's different. It's important to understand that there was no time, there was not a date on which the speakers of Rome stopped speaking Latin and started speaking Italian. It's all a smooth transition, a continuum, like you have also in the dimension of place. As you go from 
one place to another in what we consider one language it tends to be a chain of different dialects that gradually get more different which one of these is the music la musique le chocolat le chocolat silent t le livre le livre la musique la musique so single u in french most of the time is an u front rounded vowel le chocolat le livre livre so an unmarked letter e in french is generally going to be a weak schwa vowel or it'll be silent like here that final e la musique the final e is not even sounded anymore musique the k is the last sound la musique le livre and really the r spelled by r is the last one there le chocolat so good rule of thumb is drop the last letter there's many exceptions but we don't hear this last t we don't hear this last vowel there we hear the Q sound, K. And we don't really hear an E here, we hear the R. Le chocolat. Le. Well, just chocolate. The chocolate, but also. The book. La musique. Le chocolat. Le livre. Le livre. Nous aimons New York. Nous aimons. We like. Like or love. Aimons. As in. Am amiable, and the name Amy comes from Amy. Beloved, we like New York. J'aime Montréal. Montréal, not a silent T, not Montreal, like we say. I like Montréal. J'aime Montréal. It means it's the order is noun, adjective, royal mountain. Uh, we want new rule. Nous voulons. Re infinitive. We have one inflected verb within a clause. The other verbs, as verbal meanings, will be added by infinitives and participles. Want to read. Lire. Lire. Looks a lot like that noun for book. Just add a V. Livre. Which is the page's opening. Livre. And you put lire around it. How lovely. Do it French now. Put lire around the open pa opening pages. Lire, which means to read, the infinitive. for an illustration there. We like New York. Just a nice verb. That's our subject, verb, object, sentence. Same order for French. Nous. Nous. Now, to mean love, we saw M, or maybe we, uh, here's one that's plausible. It means like or love. Now we've also got aimons. They differ in the ending. So what do the endings mean? They keep certain meanings apart. It's aimons with that O and S, which is a single sound, O. That shows we are the subject. Aimons. We, it's always going to agree with the new. Always going to be mentioned there with it. So a way, good way to associate them as a learner. Look at the N and the S here at the beginning. And the subject consists of O, N, S. Connect those. We like New York. Uh, New York. Cool. Okay. Le livre, la banque, l'école. The school. The bank, la banque. Le chocolat. L'école. La banque. Je vais à la banque en voiture. Je vais à la banque en voiture. Ah, and going. Je vais. I'm going. Walking would work too. Going. À la banque. En voiture. To the bank. Two prepositional phrases here. À la banque. And they contain noun phrases with, in, within them. I'm going to the bank. En voiture. Banque. Voiture. 
without an article, just like we do in English, by car, not by the car. Here for the means of transport, and à la banque for the destination. French no longer has case, but if we were using Latin, destination would be an accusative, ad urbem, like this one. Bancam wasn't around as a word in Latin, it came during the Middle Ages, during Latin when it was still spoken, you know, a living spoken language. It's well past the Latin stage, is my understanding. En voiture, en is related to our word in. Voiture, probably the same as vehicle. Nous allons à l'hôtel. What is the, so that tur ending, abstract noun, is common like scripture. What is the root of this word? Veho carry. So this is that root of vector. Uh, what else is there? Be convex, convey. Probably also Eng the English family of, I mean, the family of the English word way. Vectura, carry and bear. So moving through the space. Okay, nous allons. That's that we ending. W-E, we. -E, <laughs> nous allons, we are going, we go. À l'hôtel. Because hotel. Hotel, it starts with the letter H, but there's no sound associated with it. The first sound of the word is a vowel, and the vowel of le drops. I believe it's masculine. We're going to the, à le, and then hotel. Je veux lire un livre. Lire un livre. That's read, infinitive, and a book. Je veux, a special inflection here, not the most common one, I want. Lire, infinitive means, has the meaning to with it. We use uh, this little particle to read, un livre, a book. So that's the verb that was highlighted there, lire, now. Lire. That's the whole verb phrase. It embraces this object. Uh, this noun object. Object in two senses. A book is a solid object that you can touch, but grammatical meaning the thing that is affected by the, by the book, although I don't know how affected it is by reading. Nous sommes ici. Nous sommes, we are. Ici means here, pointing to a place where you are standing. We are here. Again, all, new would be the basic word for it. We also use this sort of indefinite pronoun, one, mm. which is grammatically third eh. sentence, meaning is first person plural. On est ici. Ici. Here we are. I want to read a book. So it's kind of an intricate structure, really. You've got this verb phrase with its object in it as the complement of another verb. It's a kind of thing to want, the reading of a book. I want to read a book. Je. The. Both languages, the want part is inflected. That verb that comes first in the row is it what agrees with the subject, and the rest is in some not really a verb form. An infinitive is yeah. a noun derived from a verb. It's, it needs to be a noun because it's the object of wanting. But there's more. That uh. object of wanting itself has an object. Livre. It's a nice recursive structure. The same type of thing within another thing. Voila. All right, Catalan. Still starting out there. And it's taught through standard Spanish. Animales. El pájaro. ¿Cuál de estos es el pájaro? Which of these is the bird? Us. Us from Ursum, Latin. Al pingüí. El pingüí. Al pingüí. Al pingüí. Pingüí. G stop is still present there, not pingüí. The, the mark on the on the U there is the diaresis. Al pingüí. We have a what? It's not to keep the G from becoming he or anything, or G. Lucel. Lucel. The O is raised to O. Lucel. Lucel. In the tonic syllable. Lucel. And it would be a palatal at the end. And this Ocel. 
So we did Latin, we did French, we're doing Catalan. Ocel. Bird, pájaro comes from a different Latin word, but they both go back to Latin. Ocel. Bird. I think it was originally a diminutive suffix, this kel, and the o goes back to awem, the bird, accusative. And the nominative was awis, that's where you'd find it in the dictionary. So this is the root of avid and aviation and lots of others. Auspicious. Avis uh, is the nominative singular, meaning bird in Latin. So with a uh, suffix attached to it, now just part of a single noun stem, fused into a single form, I doubt that O on its own <laughs> would still mean bird. Or U, usel, usel. Remember the double L is that bright sounding as in brilliant. The brilliant L, yeah. ¿Cuál de estos es el pingüino? La araña. Probably a palatalized N. Al gran. Don't hear a K at the end. La araña. La Al gran. La araña. There's two ways to look at this spelling. A-R-A-N-Y-A. Is the N closing the second syllable? Ran. And the next has an onset, ya. I think it's more likely that nya is a single onset. And this one before it is an open syllable. Al gran. El gran. La araña. La araña. La, la, yeah, with three syllables of equal weight. Al pingui. El pingui. So higher tone on that acute accented e at the end. Masculine. Now, and this one likely feminine. <laughs> Ara, aranea must have been in Latin, right, for the spider. For this kind of thing, Google Translate is quite wonderful. Spider. Aranea homini, spider man. Aranea <laughs> hominis. <laughs> Suko vampire. Interesting. Suko. Aranea. And in Greek, arachnis, I think. I think. In ancient Greek. But the, anyway. Els animals veuen aigua. Uh, standard Spanish has los. Keep the second vowel, losing the first. Here, vice we keep illos was the Latin form. Okay, els animals, that's plural, los animales, beven, beven, agua. Agua. Els animals beven agua. Drink water, the animals drink water. This is a third plural verb, let's look at that. Beven, beu for the stem, n for the ending. And remember Latin, the ending, faciunt. So this N at the end here reflects an old NT cluster. That's a, not the stem that's interesting to us, but this ending, the NT of Latin. Verbs, inflected verbs in Romance and many other languages consist of two parts, a stem to which the suffix is attached and the suffix, or at least one suffix. And that suffix carries a specific meaning. Oso. Oso. La araña. So we don't drop the vowel of the article, at least not in writing. La araña. The Spanish word. That's interesting. La araña. Because it's not accented. And agua, we keep the el form for the feminine now. El agua. La araña. But here in Catalan, we do... Like in French, lose just lose the vowel. La araña. La araña. Edge un animal. Edge. Love that for TS. J sound like in the word edge. A voiced palatal affricate. Edge un animal. Edge un, and it carries over. Edge un. If the onset of the vowel initial following word. Un animal. Is how it's syllabified. Un ni. Edge un animal. Edge un ni. Edge un animal. Those three words. Edge is eres. You are un animal. Very close to the Latin here. 
And that word means, as I mentioned a couple streams ago, um, thing that has a soul, breath. That word, animal. Yo como un cangrejo, crab. So yo menju, menju. the same root as the French word for eating, instead of como. Un cangrejo. Un, un gran. 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 Like the Ninja Turtles character. Una araña come pájaros. A spider, subject, come, eats, birds. Una, Una araña. Araña. So we don't lose this vowel, it seems. If this is correct. And then come, menja. Menja. Pájaros, or cells. Ucells. 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 Finish this circle. Complete this. All right. El león. Al ratulí. El ratulí. Al conill. El conill. Al llador. El llador. Al conill. Al llador. El llador. So why is this palatalized? Why is it a palatal? Well, maybe because of the e. The e just colors it over time. El toro. Al cunil. Cunil. Al ratulí. Al ratulí. Al toro. Es un micu. Es un micu. Micu. Mono, I don't know. So let's go to. The Spanish word into English. Monkey. Miku. Miku. Es un mono. Nombre genérico con que es, con que se designa a cualquiera de los primates del suborden de los antropoides. Usico reducido. Usico. Snout. Love it. Go down a rabbit hole there. All right. Let's finish the task at hand, though. Es un mono. Monkey ape dungaree. Conejo. Al cunil. Al llador. Al porc. Al cunil. Es un cunil. Es un cunil. Es un conejo. So, the L corresponds to the J from an older J in Spanish. Conejo. Ok, el ratón. Al porc. Al cunil. Al ratulí. ratulí. Escribe esto en catalán. El ratón come pan. El ratulí. Ah. Ratulí. Menja. Menja. Pa. Pa. Final M there is lost. Pa comes from, of course. Bread. Panem. That's a regular development. The accusative ending and the nominative, the way, where you'd find a dictionary, is panis. This is the root of companion. What else? Pantry. Many wonderful words. It is cerdo. Oh, a pig. You are a pig. It is un, un for fuck.
Italian. Dov'è il serpente? Dov'è il serpente? Dove where? Is the snake? Same source as our word serpent in Latin. Uh, participle means serpente. The creeping one. Cos'è una mela? Cos'è una mela? What is an apple? Cos'è un libro? What is a book? Cos'è un libro? Qual è il tuo libro? Which is your book? Qual è il tuo libro? It's all noun phrase. The book of yours. So the il is a determiner and tuo is an adjective in Italian. Unlike English, where my and your, those possessive words are determiners. Not so here. Qual è? Which is your book? Where is the zoo? Dove il zoo? Lo zoo. Right. Il is the normal, the more frequent form of it. But Z is a Z, a double consonant sound. And their Italian prefers the vowel final form, lo. Lo zoo. So, a theme in the Romance family is that it dislikes strings of more than two consonants. If it was ilzo, you'd have an L, D, Z consonant, those three all bunched up, and it tries to avoid that. Dove lozo, same value as il, just for phonetic reasons, it's a preferred alternate. Dove il cuoco? Dove il cuoco, where's the cuoco? Qual è? Qual è? Which is it? We need that word it, subject pronoun in English, but Italian doesn't. You can drop it. The E eh tells you it's third singular, the verb form there. Qual è? Qual no ending? E. Eh. Cose. What is it? Yeah, cosa means either thing or what. Cose. And you'd lose that final A with the following verb. Which one? Qual è il tuo pinguino? Which one is your penguin? Qual, qual è, accented, il, tuo, because it's masculine, singular. Masculine is just an arbitrary quality. Please don't get hung up on that. Pinguino. Nothing to get upset about there. <laughs> it's the drawer into which you sort one of your, one of the drawers into which you sort your nouns. These languages have two now. In Latin, it was three drawers called genders in Romance languages too. Masculine and feminine. They might as well be red and blue. It's essentially without significance. What is it? Cosa è would be the base forms. Lose that final a. Cosa è. Two syllables. March on to the next romance language. So these are all sisters within a tighter, smaller family, more recently arisen. And English is a cousin to this group of romance language, but outside of it. But from French, primarily, we got lots of the vocab incorporated into our stock of words. So it looks like it's Romanian next. Romanian was cut off from the rest of the Romance-speaking world for many centuries. It's still, in, in many ways, wonderfully like Latin still. Got that. Uh, it looks like a plural noun, maybe from the verb the, the word for canary, just meaning birds. Got that. Un taur, doi tauri. Beautiful. Un, one, masculine form. Un taur, a bull. Doi from duo. Tauri, just like the Latin plural marker. Bull. 
Un vulture, doi vulturi. So, either vulture or another kind of bird. Vulture. Eagle or vulture. Vulture. Doi, un and doi, and just add vulture. E suffix to make it plural. Singular form and the stem, and then that consonant R. An eagle, two eagles. Un sensar, doi sensari. Dancer, what's that? Sensar. Mosquito. So T with that little mark below it is a T, as in pizza, that sound. Single consonant. Un sensar, it's a sl if you, so a plain T, ta, ta, unvoiced, ta, ta. Oh, sorry, unaspirated and unvoiced. Uh, as a quicker release, if you slow down how quickly you withdraw your tongue there from the T position, tsa, it develops this s in between. Tsan tsar. Tsan tsar. So, fascinated by the sound, I forgot what the word means, and then two mosquitoes. Un hamster. Doi hamster. What could it be? Okay, and this is not pronounced ri. Hamster. 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 So, Hamster. silent letter I here. Likely taken from English. Mulgari. Mulgash. Could be palatalizing the R. Mulgari. Yeah. And then it's devoiced because it's word final. Mulgari. So where else do you, you have a voiceless R in some places in Spanish? Mogaj. Was it donkeys? Mogaj. That bowl shaped accented uh. I eat potatoes and carrots. Yo manunk. Well, those are both. So first has the bowl, second has the hat. And C, ending it there with no vowel. She is and. Mor sovi kovi morkovi kov and then plural e carrots. Oh, I need potatoes. Kartofi. So the, the word and has a real interesting property, and she seems to have it too. Well, I'm gonna guess it does. But what I had, if I didn't have this word for potatoes here just now. It was I eat and carrots, which just doesn't work. I can't get my brain to make, unless the I eat and carrots. <laughs> what and requires is that the two things on either side be of the same structural type, either a sentence or just a noun or a verb on either side or adjectives, whatever, but it just can't be mismatched. It can't be... I eat a subject verb sentence essentially and then carrots a noun doesn't work a stallion armusad armusad m is raised from not not the most open a ah, but uh, either mid or even high vowel armusad do doi Armusar, and it's going to be written ri. We won't hear the e. Armusar e. Spelling. And that's not too surprising. Don't be too baffled by this. English has a silent e all over the place. Here's the silent i. Can't accuse Romanian of doing anything devious when it's just like English, just with a different letter. Okay, this, I want to do a complete cycle of all the ones that are on here. Like I said, there's many, many others. Local dialects. Romance. Portuguese. And we're learning the Brazilian variety in this course. A Brazilian variety. Quatro, dois, um, três.
3 4 4 So I think the T belongs to the second syllable not to the first not quatro but quatro Quatro Os quatro homens bebem leite Os is the outcome of ilos those over there those four men the four men Bebem this is bewen in catalan in portuguese we have bebem and the m is not really a m it's a weakly it's an incompletely sealed nasal generally is my impression portuguese bebem bebu would be at the i form so let's conveniently segment it here that's third plural they P, third plural. They eat. They drink, rather. The four men drink. And then the object, leite milk. Os quatro homens bebem leite. Leite, not te. Leite. So the vowel has raised. E to e. The mouth just doesn't open as far. And that leite. The te to a chi. Os quatro. Quatro. These O letters are also pronounced as high vowels. Us. Five. Três. Três. Not três, but três. Ending in a Y. Quatro. Quatro. Cinco. Cinco. Nasal N nasalizes that first vowel. And the second is raised from O to U. A stack of dollars, too. Quatro. Quatro. Two open syllables. Um. Três. Sim, ela tem três gatos. Sim, ela tem três gatos. Yes, she has três, three cats. The masculine plural form. So it looks just like Spanish, sounds a little different. Gatos. Gatos. Uma casa e cinco animais. I feel that this form of Portuguese really accentuates the distinction of a heavy and a light, and a stressed and an accented and unaccented syllable. Gatos, more than Spanish does, where it keeps some equal length. Uma casa e cinco animais. Uma. This is really interesting. Casa. In Latin, the N, so to speak, became an M. Maybe in the labializing influence of the U. A house. Casa. Spell just like a Spanish word, but this one is, this S is a Z voiced here. Casa. A and cinco, five animals, animais. Duas gatas. Yes, these are female cats. Gatas, as shown by the A in this position. São quatro, não três. São, as it nasalized. A, ah, são, they are quatro. Não, also has that. Três. This one has the hat or the umbrella. Upside down V shape. The real name for it is circumflex, but that just sounds so nerdy. I prefer something more appealing. They are four, not three. So we don't need the they, we'll just say the verb são quatro, not three, não três. Ele pede uma xícara de chá. Xícara was a cup. Ele pede, not de. Pede. Pede. Pede uma xícara de chá. Ele, I always think it's female, but it means he. Pede orders. And Latin, pedit. That T became silent. Uma, say a xícara, cup, or glass. Xícara. G, chá, of T. All right, let me leave you with my colleague for a moment. Why open the door? Sugashi this. I am busy, it is busy. Japanese, busy on weekends could be generally true. Same window typed. I didn't work the day before yesterday. おとといはパーティーをしました。おとといは、as for the day before yesterday, パーティーをしました。I did a party 
I had a party, through a party maybe, the day. I mean, no, this is the past tense we're talking about. Oshimashita. This ta suffix. And woshimashita is not a meaningful phrase. I don't know why it would tell you that. Party the day before yesterday. On weekdays, I go to work. I do work. Weekdays or weekdays. Break it down from the end. Shigoto o I do work. Kinyobi made. Made. Until Friday. Getsuyobi kara. From Tuesday. Okay, where were we? Shikara Jisha. What do the five men read? Subject is the five men. They read what? Ke lei us cinco homies. Uke, the what, right? We need the right verb. It's not number one, not what do they lose, but name. But not 20 men, but five. Us uke, the what? Us cinco homies, the five men. Lei, they read. Um prato com duas bananas. Um prato com duas bananas. Prato. Prato. Plate, yeah. Com duas bananas. Um prato com duas bananas. Um prato com duas bananas. Com. 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 Um prato. Oh, and it sounded O as well. Prato com, so not raised. Duas, plural, feminine. He asks, Ele pede for one cup of tea. Uma xícara de chá. Also accented. That's all. The, okay, we didn't do Spanish. Let's do standard Spanish. Check bond. I'm currently fortunate to be taking Spanish class at Lango, learning myself. Spanish for did you know? Ah, uh, two to three ish. Just been around it. Perfect. <laughs> No me gusta mucho ir a la escuela. I don't like to go to school very much. A veces los exámenes son difíciles. Difíciles. Y tengo mucha tarea. At times, the exams are difficult and I have a lot of homework. Solo me gusta ver a mis amigos. Ver a mis amigos. That's a verb phrase. To see at them. <laughs> Uh, verb phrase containing the object noun phrase there. Y hablar con ellos. Solo me gusta. Solo. So, note that it's masculine. I think that's not agreeing with the speaker. It wouldn't be sola for a female speaker, right? Sola just to the only degree. Only, I only like, solo me gusta ver to see my friends and to speak with them. So here too, just one inflected verb. The other verbal parts in this clause are infinitives, which is verbal nouns. Verbs in disguise, in nouns clothing. ¿Por qué no le gusta ir a la escuela? <laughs> no tiene mucha tarea. ¿Por qué los, no? ¿Por qué los exámenes no son fáciles? Yep, yeah, she said they were difíciles, difficult. Which means they are non fa no son faciles. They are not easy. That's that. Here's that root. From the Latin verb facere. F-A-C is the basic form. 
we've got these among many dozens of other derivatives Spanish difíciles Difi accented C less hard faciles easy and the look at the difference when do you get the a ah, when do you get the e this one means easy well it's not simple they're both accented it's not that when you have the prefix this one shifts it raises faciles the same root that was spelled F A C in Latin. Same spelling here. Instead of a K by the C, we mark a S sound here. That's because of the following E. Fa ki in Latin became fa C or thi, depending on the region of Spain and the time period. That's that verb root that means do make. So easy, faciles, plural form here, doable and Difficiles, not or like disdoable. Difficiles. Complete the chat. La something, por favor. Aquí tiene, señor. Here, here you, here you have it, sir. La cuenta, por favor. These other things make no sense. It's got to be a feminine noun because of the la. Te gusta. It's going to be an infinitive. ¿Cuántos países conoces? How many countries do you know? Viajar makes sense there. Do you like to travel? De viajar. No me gusta de, but just te gusta viajar. Esta clase, feminine, but this noun stem doesn't show it. Esta es demasiado. Is more. Okay. Difícil makes sense, and this noun also does not distinguish masculine and feminine. Yo, it's got to be an old form, leo. I read un libro de español. I read a book of Spanish. Hasta luego. See you next time. Okay. Hola, adios. <laughs> Goodbye. I think luego soon. See you soon. Hasta as until. Ellos limpiar su dormitorio todas las mañanas. El, okay, ellos, which verb form agrees? They clean their bedroom every morning. Todas las mañanas. All the mornings. Plural. Ellos is going to be limpian. And that's, remember, faciunt. Compare the endings here. Limpian. Say the stem ends in a. Limpiar. Sometimes be gone, but it's basically an a ah final verb stem. The n is the third plural ending, which goes back to the unt ending of Latin. Fa, ki, unt. This one too. Simplify that cluster. Cluster means two or more consonants in contact. Mi, hm, es muy grande. This could be a noun of either gender. The mi doesn't distinguish, and the grande doesn't agree or doesn't sh doesn't distinguish those forms i suppose it agrees on some level but it's not expressed in, a f <laughs> in different forms of the noun but it's got to be a noun me aquí my here makes no sense my where my eating my food but my computer is a better fit is very big es muy grande soy de españo españa peru Vivo makes sense. I live in China. And this shows it's really two independent sentences there. I should have stayed on it. Hola, me llamo Maximiliano. My name is. Soy alto y moreno. I am tall and dark haired. Me gusta mucho tocar la guitarra. I really like playing guitar. Las chicas dicen que, se, que soy muy simpático y que toco muy bien la guitarra. The ladies say that I'm very nice, and that I play the guitar well. Muy bien, very well. Mis amigos dicen que soy estudioso, pero la escuela no me gusta mucho. My friends say that I'm very studious, hard working in school, but I don't care for school much. Como es Max, es estudioso, alto y simpático, yeah? So he, just, so he says. Bajo y simpático, no. Alto y rubio, no. Rubio y guapo, 
No. Quiero ir a España. Este... It's going to be masculine. <laughs> All right. Este carro. I want to go to Spain. This car. Not so much. This airplane. This child. This year. Año. Hola. ¿Cómo estás? Año. If I remember, let's talk about this. Año. In año. Year. ¿Qué escuchas? Hola. ¿Cómo estás? Estás. How are you? Intimate form. Yo escribo en la clase de francés. I write in the class of French. Buenos días, señor. ¿Cuánto cuesta esta camisa blanca? La camisa blanca cuesta 20 dólares. Pero la camisa azul cuesta 40 dólares. Nosotros también tenemos una camisa verde por solo 10 dólares. Yo quiero leer un masculine noun. Libro works. The others are all feminine. Un tells me that it's in a phrase with a masculine noun. Its form un rather than una is a reaction to that fact. Yo soy una mujer. Yo soy una mujer. Yo soy una mujer. Yo como. Tú comes. Él come. So this is a partial paradigm collection of different forms of the same verb. I eat, you eat, she eats, oh, he specifically, él. Ella would be she. El pan. El pan the bread. Una mujer. Ah, una, una mujer. Una mujer. Mujer. The, the voice is there. It's a voiceless R. Mujer. ¿Tú bebes leche? ¿Tú bebes leche? Here, at meaning you, the subject form is accented. Bebes leche. Yo bebo leche. Yo bebo leche. Homegirl's falling asleep. I drink milk. ¿Tú bebes agua? Tú bebes agua. You drink water. Tú bebes agua. Yo bebo agua. Yo bebo agua. I ¿Tú comes manzanas? Tú. You drink. I drink. Tú comes. You eat. Do you eat apples? Man sa. So we spell it with a Z, but it sounds like our S. Voiceless. Manzanas. Do you eat apples? Spanish has no voiced fricatives. They're all voiceless. Juan come manzanas. Juan. Voiceless. Used to be a Z, I think. Come eats manzanas apples. Juan come pan. Come eats pan bread. El hombre bebe agua. El hombre bebe agua. The man drinks. It's a noisy setup I have here. Drinks water. Yo como pan. I eat pan bread. Él come manzanas. Él come manzanas. He eats apples. The bread, el pan. La mujer. Yo bebo, tú bebes, el bebe. Drink. So O for I form. S for the U form. And now the final E with no consonant for the older it ending. Bebit in Latin. And el he drinks. La mujer bebe agua. Mujer bebe agua. The woman... Bebit aquam. Water. Yo como pan. It's interesting. Bebit stayed a B there. That's what it was in Latin, too. It didn't just go in Spanish. I eat bread. Yo como manzanas. I eat apples. All the languages that we've seen, all these descendants of Latin, they still have plural marking on the nouns, but they no longer distinguish case. And the verbs still preserve this distinction of endings. Let me see, yeah. Yo is it. 
with the T tending to drop, sometimes it's written and not sounded, and the int of the third plural simplifying to N. They continue these endings here. And the root itself continues as well in Spanish. It's in French, faire, in Italian, fare, and so on. All right, maybe let's go on to something that is not romance, because why not? We've seen all the ones, I think, all the ones that are taught on here. And looking forward to them releasing, or, yeah, releasing the, the Yiddish one on its way. We have a comment. No. Okay, so I'm going to be using this input system to look up Chinese characters. And I will say it aloud as I go. So you can follow along and then that learn this as a way to look up Chinese. Sort of put characters together. Almost as fun as writing them by hand and sort of uh, doing that action with training wheels. Hobbies is our topic. Way. It's an A, not the I of number two. Way. C. C. X is a sh sound. It occurred to me today. It's kind of like if we say the word human, it's not the same as in hole or something. The E vowel that follows shapes the fricative. Sh with the very small space up front here. C is what the X signifies, kind of like in Mexico also. This verb means study. C, it looks Tio. like it's Tio. C. two inside strokes. Tiao should be right S outside and then M. And there it is, number two. Tiao is a name. That's all I know it as. Family name. C is the one we want. This is Nun. No, Tao. Tao. Ding. Ding. Diao. Xi. Wen. Wen. Written language. Written word. Wei shema. Wei shema. For what or why? Wen. Okay, first, I'll just go through all four. Shi. Shi. Wen. Wen. Yu. Yu. Yi. We want. Wen. 我想去中国。我想去中国. I wanna go to is those those two words go to those meanings are expressed by the single qu the single syllable. China. 中国。你会说中文吗? 你会说中文吗? To decode this, it's good to start at the end. This is a question marking tag. 中文, Chinese. 说中, 说中文, to speak it. 会说中文, to be able to speak Can you? This ma signals up or down, yes or no. Can you speak Chinese? Okay, let me do it from the front again. Wei. Wei. Li. Dui. Bao. Bao. Wei. Ta xi huan xue xi ying yu. Ta xi huan xue xi ying yu. She enjoys. She likes. Xi to study. We need that infinitive mark there on the non inflected verb. Ying Yu English. Wen. Wen. Written language. Tang sugar. Tang. Xi study. Xi. Chao. Go beyond. Chao. Wei. Wei. On behalf of. Wo xi huan ting zhong wen ge. 我喜欢听中文歌 I like to listen to Chinese songs. Spawns. Wait. Wait. Shi. Shi. Market or city? Xian fresh. Xian. Xi study. Xi. Acquire through repetition. Wen. Wen. Wei shema ta bu gao xing. Writing, not 
riding a horse, but writing language down. Why is he unhappy? Or we could say not happy. Very same expression in Chinese. Whether you regard I would say is a single word. Is this a prefixed single word? Or is it a phrase? Who knows? Not me. 你会说中文吗? So now we're going to see how to look up characters with this system. This is a graphic decomposition and input character lookup method here. 你会说中文吗? So you need to picture the character in my mind and break it down into its pieces, which map onto the keys of the keyboard. O for the person, N, F, Ni, Hui. I'm writing the traditional forms first. And then we'll convert to input them in Duolingo. Ni Hui is with the person shape on top. O, O, M, W, A, sun shape on the bottom. Shuo, speech radical on the left, Y, R. And the right component, C, R, U. Just reading down. 你会说中文吗? 你会说中文吗? 说中文, you can in uh, input things more than once at a time. L for middle, Y, K for when is 中文. You can input this single character or this collocation, language name. 你会说中文吗? Is the mouth radical R. S, Q, F for the horse. So we've got some traditional forms that we need to replace with this convenient button at the middle down there. 你会说中文吗? 会说中文吗? 你为什么学习中文? 中文 Chinese. 学习, study it. 为什么? For what reason? Why do you study Chinese? 你们想不想去纽约? 你们想不想去纽约? Do you, yes or no? Want to go to New York? York. 我用电脑学习中文 我用电脑学习中文 I, so it's a couple ways to look at it a series, a sequence of verb object phrases use computer Transitive phrase, and then Xu Xi Zhongwen, study Chinese. And an elegant way to translate it is to take this as an instrumental. Using such and such means with, by means of. The kernel here, I study Chinese language. What? <laughs> study Chinese. I, v, using the computer is what I. 你的朋友去哪儿? To input there, 你的朋友去哪儿? Where's your friend going? Friend. 我用电脑学习中文. I study Chinese with a computer. Via computer. 牙 yeah. yeah, means like a tusk or tooth. Rising tone. Xi. Xi is that fricative, as in Mexico, spelled with X. West, that word. Xi, the west one. Okay, let's read them from left to right. In. In. Yi. Okay, let's give the meanings too. In. For cause, reason. Yi. Healing arts, medicine. Yi. Xi. Xi, the west. Yu, rain. Yu. Oops. Let's select the right. Ban. Ban. Don't have a good meaning handy for this. So, to input it, M for the top stroke. G for the earth. L, L, maybe? L, L, G? No. Maybe I after this. For the dot and then an L. There it is. I L G for the right component. Ban. 
Let's get a good all-purpose meaning. Rough and ready translation. Group, party, squad is a good one. Shift. Squad or shift, a group of people. Ban, you're right, like when you go to work. Shang ban. Tong ban, and so on. For your colleague. So. Place where. Just a moment here. Give you back to my colleague. Tuesday till Friday. Tuesday. Chugokukara from China, Kimashita, I came. Oh boy, I'm gonna have to clean this keyboard. Getsuyobikara, Kinyobi Made, Shigoto Shimas. Work from Monday to Friday. That's it. Forty-five out of fifty. Cool. In fifth place. What? Good grief! Gotta double it to get to the top. Way to go. Follow. All right. More Swedish. From left, Qi Ying Peng Peng friend. Uh, Chao Chao Super So Ying Ying Cause reason Yi Yi by means of Ya. Alright, from the left, Wei Wei I Tai Xi Xi Ya Spain Sibanya Sibanya Look for meanings in this case, that's just three syllables. It sound like the target word Hispania. Sibanya. Ya Sibanya. Jugo Tai Gui, so you wobu my Jugo Tai Gui, so you my this soy is a really wonderful construction, inherited from classical and old Chinese. So yi is that by means of. So then this phrase, this expression soy yi means that is the reason by which it is thus. This is too expensive. Soy that's the reason why. So, well, boom, I, I'm not, I won't buy it. E. All right, from the left, wait. Wait. Shen. E. E. Ya. Ya. E. Washu si chung wen, yin wei wo yao chu chung guo. Washu si chung wen, yin wei, or yin wei. How does he say it? Washu si chung wen, yin wei wo yao chu chung guo. In way sounds like two high tones. Interesting. Wo yao qu zhong guo. Wo xue xi zhong wen, yin wei wo yao qu zhong guo. In way first tone, second tone. Okay, that's how I hear it. Wo xue xi zhong wen, yin wei wo yao qu zhong guo. I've read that it can also be with first and fourth. Way. Way. This way. This way has also a second tone reading. Many characters have more than one way that they're pronounced. All right, I study Chinese. Because I want to go to China. Same basic constituent order here. Subject, verb, object. I study Chinese. Yin Wei, because. The reason being. 
would be a word for word rendering. 我要去中国 So we have these nested phrases. China, object of 去 to go to. That's a complement of the wanting will. Here, want to go to China. All right, from the left, 面面 Xi the West. Xi, 国 Kingdom. 国 In reason. In. Xi the West. Reason in. In. Yi by means of. Yi. The tooth. Ya. Ya. Wo place where. So. From the left, fu. Fu. Commit. Why outside? Why? Ban squad. Ban. Song pai or also relax. Song. Forehead smack. Yi. Yi. By means of xi the west. Xi. Reason in. In. Tooth ya. Ya. Squad ban. Ban. 他想住在西班牙，因为他的女朋友是西班牙人。他想住在西班牙，因为他女朋友是西班牙人。住在 ，either a single word or a phrase within a larger phrase. 他想 ，he wants to live in， 住在 ，Spain。因为 reason being because 他的女朋友 his girlfriend。And the very same constituent order we have in English. It's really easy once you get over the hurdle of the characters and the tones. Syllable structure is really easy, and the word order is very intuitive for a native English speaker. If you or any competent English user, very very close together in how they order their like the logical sequence of the phrases. Many languages, other things are kind of inverted. We have to relearn. It's like driving on the other side of the road, but Chinese goes the same most of the time as English. Most of it's been because you might have that his girlfriend, Li Pangyo. She. This is an identifying or classifying verb. She is Spanish. A Spain person is Spanish. This is too expensive, so I won't buy. Here comes the fun bit. We get to recall these characters. This is too expensive, so I won't buy. Too expensive, so I'm not buying it. Zhega, Y Y M R. Ge, O W J R. Tai is K I. Gui, L M B U C. So I won't buy. This is too expensive, so I won't buy. Therefore, that's the reason why. So I. H S H M L E is predicted. W H Q I. B M F. My my W L M B C. Wait, B U C rather. B U C. So you will buy my. Now we're gonna simplify with the button and paste that. 为什么你想去西班牙？为什么你想去西班牙 ？Why you want to go to Spain? So we just have to add, invert with the do, add this do support, and add the word to. And this word is interesting. The way 什么 could also go elsewhere in the sentence. It could be 你为什么想去西班牙？ Why do you want to go? Here, this one makes me think it might better be translated as "Why is it the case that?" Why should I? And then an unaltered sentence within that. Why do you want to go to Spain? Spanya are chosen for phonetic reasons. All right, from left, the reason in in medicinal arts e e west c c green e e e c But from the left, 服 submit 服 outside why why 
Squadron 班，班，班，松，松，今晚班。Let's do some more Catalan. You can get two romance romance languages at once. Plurales. So whenever more than one of a thing is referred to, Albi, Albi, and is lost. Vinum of Latin, French vin, vin vino in Spanish, el v. El libras. El libras. Palatalizing because of the e. The vowel of the syllable one has colored the consonant. La clau. Clau from clauem of Latin. El vi. El vi. We want. El libras. El libras. La llave. So these are cousin. These are sister words in the two languages. They both come from Latin. Clauem. You're giving a lia, and here keeping the original cla. But losing the second syllable. Lampolia. La clau. La clau. What do we have in English from this clau? Clavia, the German word for piano, is the keyed instrument. Clavichord, the other instrument. Levi, please let me know when you watch this. <laughs> Els nens mengen pomes. Els nens mengen pomes. The boys, los niños, niños, mengen is comen. They eat pomes, manzanas. So think of French pom. Cousin right here. Probar. Buen trabajo. Masculine, no ending here. Continuar. La nena menja madushas. La nena, the girl, menja eats madushas. La nena menja madushas. 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 Fresas, strawberries. What a neat word. La nena menja madushas. La nena menja madushas. La niña come. Frases, <laughs> not phrases, but strawberries. Fresas, I've done that before. Las nenas escriben cartas. Las nenas. Las nenas escriben cartas. Escriben. Las nenas escriben cartas. Los las niñas, feminine plural. Las niñas escriben. Essentially the same pronunciation, but spelled B. Cartas, feminine plural. Las niñas escriben cartas. La dona llegeix uns diaris. Llegeix. La dona llegeix uns diaris. Llegeix. 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 La dona llegeix uns diaris. Llegeix, and it's voiced, probably because it's between two vowels here. La, la dona llegeix uns diaris. Uns diaris. Diaris. Periódicos diarios. Unos sab. So, la, do, la mujer. The woman reads. So, this is Latin. Legit. Palatalized. Ye. Je. And then she, all palatalized. Not surprising. So, I think we made this equation on another stream. I love this spelling. I found it so much from legit. So much of it has changed, but it's so clearly recognizable what is underlying it. I have cut the lens somewhere. Here we go. So this j j sh i x reflects Latin legit reads leg the stem it the ending third singular. So every segment that's in this word from Latin has become a palatalized, has been substituted by a palatal one. Je for le and je for gi, and then sh somehow for the 
it. Mujer uh, leye. Leyes. Leyes. And this Spanish too, leye, reflects this very same word form. Outcome quite different, but all by regular changes. Unos diarios. Unos diarios. Periódicos. Leye. Bon dia. Peixos. Peixos. Fish. Peixos. Hello, fish. Buenos dias. Pes uh, pescados. Buenos dias, pescados. La dona, las paraulas. La dona, la mujer. Les paraules. 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 Palabras. These are paraules. Defect, def, ref, reflecting the same origin. With some, some jumping around. Parabola. This is closer to the original, but Greek. Paraules. Here, the br, the b has no. Well, l and r are always interchanging or dancing around in Spanish. La mujer las palabras, two nouns. La nena menja maduixas. Maduixas es fresas. La nena, la niña. Come, menja. Fresas. Strawberries. Beautiful. Ya are doi urshi. Ya are, she has doi urshi. Ya, ya are doi urshi. Ya are doi urshi. Ursh. Don't really hear the E anymore. She are has two bears. Un bo, doi boy. Bo, doi boy. One cow. Two kind, two cows. Ox, bow, alright. Un papagal, doi papagal. Here, I think the I is coloring the L, not gali, but gali. Which happened in the history of the Slavic languages too, which was going on nearby. Un papagal, doi papagal. A parrot, I think. The talking papagal. Two parrots. Un leu, doi lei. Leu, doi lei. So very often they're chopping off the second of two vowels and replacing it with e. It's not quite suffixation. The singular has a segment that's not. It's no longer there in the plur in the plural form. This u. So a lion, two lions. Originally, leon was the form. For both the English and the Romanian. Porch. Porch, right. Pork, I think. Letter C without anything after it. And here the I is, we, could, we say palatalizing, giving a different tongue position to the consonant. Porch. Porch. Pigs. Un poyanjen. Doi poyanjen. Poyanjen. I don't recognize it. Un poyanjen. Doi poyanjen. Where does this come from? Okay, Slavic. Baumchina for spider. A spider to spiders. Rekin. Rekin. So, okay, the final E is not heard directly. But it colors the end probably. Rekin. Rekin. Sharks. Un kokosh, doi kokosh. Un kokosh, doi kokosh. Sounds just about alike to me. And was it coconut? Kokosh. Rooster. 
two roosters. Bo doi boy. Ox. Bo doi boy two oxen. Nice little English. Dogs. Pahar. Shara for a glass. Shwareje. Shwareje. Mouse. Kuini. Kuini. Avem castravets pe masă? Avem, I guess we have, castravets pe masă. Castraveți. Avem. Do we have castraveți? Castraveți. Cucumbers pe masă. Masă. Pe. Ok. Mensam. Masă. Masă. Pe. pe. On for per. Through originally, bit masa on the table. Oh, cool. Not through the table, what it looks like from a Latin point of view, but on. Yepuri. 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 Noi nu mancam cacei de usturoi. Say, noi nu mancam, we don't eat. Cacei de usturoi. Cacei. Loaves of garlic. Puppies. <laughs> Usturoi. Usturoi. Two or just that the stem ends? Cățăi. Mâncăm. Noi nu mâncăm cățăi de usturoi. Cățăi de usturoi. We do not eat cloves of garlic. Pui. 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 Ah, poli would be Latin, I think. Pui chickens. Usturoi. Usturoi. What was the phrase? Usturoi. Loads of burgers. Two girls. Doa. Fat. Oh, what's the plural now? Fata for singular. Fete, yeah. This one has this accent. And the vowel changes. Fata, fete, manunk. This one. Manunchi, what's the plural form? Maybe manunka. We mandukant. Manunka, alternating accents. M, bowl, n, umbrella. Mananka bowl. Grapes. Owa, right? Struguri. Strugursh. Strugursh. Cool word. Doa fete. Two girls. Mananka, I hope. Strugursh. So, it's not directly visible, but this verb form in Romanian. I'm presuming Manunka has the same ending that we see in in that fuck unit, the NT. The T is gone, as in many other sister languages, but the N has also gone. Or maybe it's colored the A into this U. Uh, Manunka. So, not interested in the stem here, but the ending is the same, though there's no shared segment that happens. I think just diverge over time. We're talking about 2,000 years. They have, give or take, they have horses. They, yay, I think. Uh, E-I. And then are. Yay, au, is they have. Ha, be, und, au. Here's that same ending. Ow, they, so this one they eat. Third plural. And ow, what a cool form. This reflects, so that means they have. And it comes from, so here it's the, both the stem and the ending that we're talking about. Habe was the stem in Latin, and then habint. So just the ah survives unscathed. Everything else is 
been affected by sound changes. Oh, ow, and then horses. Mm, Kai. That's probably Cavalus. Cavalli. Maybe. A ow Kai. Nice. A ow Yay ow Kai. They have horses. Love it. El are două sticle de maioneză. Sticle de maioneză. Sticle. Models. El are. El are două sticle de maioneză. The feminine. Două. Bottles. El are. He has. Two bottles. Feminine. Of mayonnaise. Mayonnaise. Named after a region of France, the mayonnaise sauce. Placinte. Placinte cakes, I think. I'll just leave you to ponder what English word is related to that. O varză. Două verze. O varză. Două verze. That same vowel change as with the word for girl. O is really cool. The definite article. O means the, and it's feminine singular, and it comes from unam. It's all shrunk down to a single vowel sound, o. Varzop. One cabbage, two cabbages. Varzop. You call that umlaut. The e, probably, of an i suffix, maybe? Colored. Varzop. Syllable before. Like happened in the Germanic family, English, German, the Norse languages. Bărbatul are două cepe pe masă. Bărbatul, the man, are, has, două cepe pe masă. On the table, două, two. Cepe. Onion, cebola, Portuguese. Masă from mensum, upon the table. O supă. Două supe. So this is the o unam one. Soup, two soups. Bufnice. Bufnice. Oh. Bufnice. Ubo stem, I think, for owl and some suffixes. Or a second component. So this is uh, Bufnice. The, okay, what's owl singular in Romanian? Taking guesses. <laughs> A little quiet in the chat today. All right, bufnice. I think it's not going to be a tz in the singular, but maybe bufnita or something. And I'm going to use Google Translate. English to Romanian. Owl. Bufnita. Okay, it is that mutated T, and it's uh, the central vowel. Bufnitsa. S and E giving E. Just as in fata, fata E, maybe, fata, although feminine instead of masculine. The woman has two geese, o femeie, are, has, habit. Okay, geese, answer in Latin. Gangustia. Doe. Feminine, I think. Wait. No, I'm going to guess masculine. This goose word looks like it's from Germanic. Gangustia. Doi gustia. The hatted one. Isha. Wait, how is it? You know, I, but a sh, sh and then t. Like geste, kind of, the German word for guests. But it's related to genze, I think. O femeia, the woman, are, has. Doi, I'm guessing masculine plural. Doa, it's a feminine. Okay. Femeia are, doa, gishte. The woman, o femeia. Are has two tables in the kitchen. Doe mese. 
mais c'est le the two tables do wa do wa rather mais c'est in ok la bouquetterie for in the la uh -huh. in the la in the la would have been in latin Bu what is it la bouquetterie Femme ya the woman. Ah, uh, spoiled again. Foiled, rather. Are the women, plural, feminine plural. In bukatari. Well, that thing wasn't very helpful there, was it? Dictionary hints are wrong or just not good. Are the women. In, in, I wonder how that sounded, bukaterie. The woman, the woman, femeia, fused article at the end, are the wa, the wa, gosh, de, gosh, de, sh, rather, accent, or the modified, de. The woman, femeia, are two tables, doa mese, doa mese in bukateria, was it? Bukateria, bukateria. All right. I've got in me tonight. Thanks for watching. See you next time.